Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about ASHRAE 62.1 corridor outside air calculation. All right. All right. So let's get into it. So to begin with, we're going to start with the following. Uh, as we know, the formula is outside air. What is it? Okay. So the formula is the following. Outside air is going to be equal to RP. Okay, PZ plus RA, AZ, and everything is divided by EZ. There we go. So that's going to be the main formula for outside air, and everything relates to the number of people or area. It's pretty much number of people, area, and air rate. Okay. So it, as you can see in this part, what we're gonna let's do this in pink. So when we're doing this, we say that RP, as you can see, is as we saw in the other videos, is like people rate, see? How much CFM per person? And the other one is the people. Now RA is going to be an area rate. See, as you can see here, area rate, which means how much CFM per square feet, okay? And the other part is anyways, the area. There we go. And the EZ is going to be the zone distri air distribution effectiveness. We usually put it 0 0.8, okay? Or sometimes one, but 0 0.8. We can go the, uh, over the, go over in other videos about that. Okay, so when you are doing the outside air calculation, you have to know the occupancy category. So that way you can go to the ASHRAE 62.1 tables or also you can resort to the IMC 2015 as a general as a, a general uh, source of information to find out the rate so you have those two options ARRA 62.1 or IMC International Mechanical Code so the the tables that you see in here are based on ARRA 62.1 all right so now what we're going to do is check on the occupancy category so as we said, let's put this in here. Occupancy, occupancy category, occupancy category, cate, category. Okay. So for the occupancy category, what we're talking about is we're trying to obtain the outside air or fresh air or ventilation CFM for corridors. Okay. Corridors. Okay, so now the corridors, the, the, the corridors, the corridor could be located in a commercial area or could be applied to a dwelling unit. So in this case, that's why I put in here, this table is from ASHRAE and you can, as you can see in here, it's under general. You can see the corridors in here under general, or you can have, if it's in a residential unit, for example, in a mixed use building, the lower level is retail. Then we have the second or third floor or until the seventh floor, we have all residential units. So depending where you are putting these corridors. So in this case, as you can see here, we have the corridor all the way here, as you can see, there we go all the way this is the corridor and the square feet for this corridor is going to be let's say 1020 square feet and how do you know that that the drawings come from the architect so that has to be already a given okay so it's 1020 square feet uh, that's going to be the corridor as, and as you can see here this is the elevator lobby let's put elevator elevator lobby okay lobby and then as you can see here these are actually residential units let's put in here say this is floor number two uh, residential unit one floor number two residential unit two floor number two residential number three as you can see it's pretty much the same but now in that case, we have another ventilation category for that case, which is in the same table, but a little bit lower. It says residential right here, right? So if we go here, there we go. 
in residential let's put that in here right here residential category okay right here we can see the corridors and in the corridors we're gonna be able to see the rate see occupancy category residential so what is actually the rate we need two so let's put that for corridors actually are the same in this case so either for general or for occupancy category in residential you're gonna have only the area outdoor air rate area outdoor air rate which is gonna be the same as you can see in here is gonna be 0 0.06 0 0.06 in other words what you're gonna have in here is the following let's go here and then we're gonna put with um, let's put this in yellow okay so RP equals zero PZ we don't have anything anything's or, or then we're gonna have RA well, how much is RA so the area outdoor air rate as you can see in the tables is gonna be 0 0.06 CFM per square feet or you can anyways put SF and then the area AZ is going to be equal to 1020 square feet okay so now we're going to go to the table outside air is going to be equal zero times zero plus our a is going to be 0 0.06 of course this is going to be cfm per square feet you can you can always write this as square feet like that or sf times az which is going to be pretty much the area okay square feet this goes away with this and then that has to be divided by 0 0.08 <coughs> excuse me which is pretty much the zone air distribution effectiveness okay there is another table for that so how much is the outside air that we obtain if we do the math we're going to be able to obtain 77 cfm okay there we go 77 cfm but when you obtain that number that result that is actually the zone okay let's put zone outside air oa but the design cfm is what you have to already determine so based on that we're gonna put the following well, let's put this in yellow so outside air yeah, we're going to round it up. We, it's always a very good idea to have more CFM of outside there than less. So we're just going to put this 80. Or if it's 81 zone outside there, we're going to make it 85. Or depending, depends always on the designer. Okay, so this is... Uh, okay, let's go here. This would be... I'm going to... I'm going to raise this a little bit more so that way... Okay, let's see that delete okay there we go okay so 80 cfm okay and then what is that let's see <coughs> that's gonna be the design cfm design outside air cfm which is pretty much what we need in order to size our outside air ventilation strategy okay well, just a couple of notes in here to just to so that way everyone can get familiar on what this terminology is. So as you remember, this part is actually what we calculate or we know as VC. V, VC, which is breathing zone. That's the equation for breathing zone. Okay, breathing zone. Okay, that's what the standard calls it. Now, <coughs> now we call this zone air distribution effectiveness. Zone air distribution, distribution effectiveness. Effectiveness. All right. So in order, and, and, and also one more um, note on this. So in this case, since we don't, we do not have 
a people outdoor air raid, which is zero zero, pretty much whenever they're asking you how much outside air do you need for a corridor, you can always tell them I just need this amount of outside air. We're gonna put this in, in green, there we go. So for a corridor, in other words, if you wanna become more, uh, you know, you wanna say this verbal, you're gonna say, for, an, for a corridor, I just need 0 0.06 CFM per square feet. However, it's better to say, okay, for a corridor, I need six CFM per 100 square feet. There you go. Let's put this as a cloud. All right. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video and please like, don't forget to like the, hit the like button and subscribe and share. All right. Thank you very much.